Ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and for the millions watching at home, DCK Productions proudly brings to you the greatest podcast in the world! Come on. The greatest podcast in the world? Suck it. No, you suck it. No, you suck it. No, you suck it. No, you suck it. I appreciate it if you both suck it. Suck it! Welcome, everybody, to Suck It. I am the great and powerful King of Kings, Prince of All That Is Awesome. Derek, how the hell is everybody this evening? Um, it is Wednesday, hump day. Thank God, only two more days of the weekend. Um because this one's been an uh, interesting one, to say the least. Um, but I am glad to be where I'm at today and having fun with y'all like I always freaking do on a Monday through Friday, 8%, 8 p.m. East, 5% p.m. Pacific. You know, this is what we do. Um, so, jumping right into it tonight. Um, tonight is going to be a fun and interesting show. So I have a, um, a guest on with me tonight by the name of Rolfredo Torres. He is um, an actor and a director. He's actually directing a new movie called Donald Trump, The Chosen One. Um, and um, it's going to be an interesting conversation I have with this gentleman. Um, but before we get into the interview, let's go ahead and roll the trailer. The coronavirus is killing millions of people across the planet. But COVID-19 has infected our world in a much more sinister way. It has turned criminals into more merciless killers. But now we have the cure. The secret will be revealed on October 4th, 2020. I will not be impeached. I will be reelected in 2020. We must eliminate all of our enemies. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, at a time when violent criminals had rules. But now the rules have been broken. Times have changed. I will implement my own laws by creating a secret weapons division to eliminate all criminals once and for all. You are a leader. You have been chosen. It is time to implement Operation Mindset. I had predicted that the world was coming to an end within the next 12 years. The epidemic of the coronavirus is one of the ways the world is coming to an end, and the time has come. You better start talking. What would you like to know? Everything. Start from the beginning. This is Benjamin Dawkins with 93.1 FM. The coronavirus continues to spread throughout America and the rest of the world. Who else was involved? The government. Now you got my attention. We know who's behind it. I need to find who did this. And I need your help. What are you going to do, Frank? You going to kill an FBI officer? I know one man that will restore back American values. My fellow Americans, I'm here to report that our country is currently under the threat at the hands of career criminals. I saw it, everything. 
He charged him on the head. You're being charged with 89 counts of first degree murder. You're the scum of the earth, Frank. Frank is totally out of control. Our children are being kidnapped and sold to other countries. This new president, Donald Trump, is killing our business. Three, heading north. I've approved Operation Mindset in the United States. He's a cop! He's a cop! <laughs> oh. I want him dead! <laughs> I need to make you all aware of the danger that you and your children are facing. This is a war against the devil soldier. We shall protect the innocent. We shall protect the weak. All right, and that is the trailer um, for my next guest um, who's coming on, who directed this movie, who's also acted in this movie. Um, please welcome to the show, Wilfredo Torres. Thank you very hey, much. Hey, how are you? Thank you, buddy. Thank you for having me. Hey, not a problem. It's my pleasure. So um, let's, you know, let's just go right into it. Um, tell me about this movie. Well, the uh, this particular project was... Uh... Kind of like a work in progress was a, a group of aspiring actors trying to figure out if we can put a decent movie together here in Central Florida. And so what I've done is um, I've provided opportunities uh, for a lot of aspiring actors and actresses that if they would have gone to L Atlanta, L.A. Or, um, or, Las or Las Vegas or wherever, they wouldn't get the opportunities that I've been able to provide for them. And so we didn't have a big name star or nothing like that. And I basically knew that if in the event I came out with a with a feature film with no, nothing, no kind of catch, you know, it, it could be a Sharknado or something. I was looking for something like that. So, um, so my thought process was I needed someone with a following and that had a voice. And of course, uh, uh, Donald J. Trump, you know, in 2016, over 60 million people, 62 you know, voted him into Oval Office. And so I said to myself, wow, you know, and he is a, a great character. You know what I mean? He's, a, he's, he's my star, you know? So I said to myself, if I can put the concept of Donald Trump and um, and at least get his following, then I said, I'm, we may be onto something here. And so I, Donald Trump in this movie is basically, I had the privilege and opportunity under the challenges to kind of make it on real time implemented a little bit about the coronavirus was kind of like implement what's going on now. Like the dark angels are not on Tifa. Uh, Donald Trump is facing two pandemics, the uh, coronavirus and the uh, violent career criminals that are being released from prison and they're repeated offenders. And so uh, when you see the movie in the movie, the beginning of the movie, he finds, he signs an executive order uh, proving a vaccine to save millions of American lives. and uh, But then he's still faced with the pandemic of the criminals preying on the vulnerable, the innocent, and the weak of our loved ones, right? Uh, a lot of missing children, human trafficking, and so forth, uh, drugs being dealt to our kids. And it's kind of like the last stop, you know, when when the most violent of the most violent criminals, there is no way of solving, there's no rehabilitation, what do you do? So uh, Mr. Trump winds up uh, implementing and organizing uh, an organization called the Dark Angels. And the Dark Angels are regular civilians, but on a broad scale throughout the United States of America. At nighttime, while the bad guys are, are praying and, and taking advantage of the innocent, the vulnerable, and the weak, the Dark Angels tuck in their kids at night. And there are these are average citizens, police officers, teachers, people that work in mom and papa restaurants, uh, and then they go at night, you know, and get go after the bad guys. Okay. Interesting uh, premise for a movie. 
Um, very interesting, actually. So um, I want to go ahead and rewind to something that you said at the very, very beginning of this um, this interview that you said that you're out, you went out to shoot a movie in Central Florida. So um, the reason why I find that interesting is because I'm from Orlando area. No, hey. Um, so I only moved to Virginia four years ago, but I spent my, most of my childhood and most of my adult life. Um, I moved there when I was seven from Ohio and I lived in Altamont Springs. I lived in Sanford, you know, Longwood area for my entire life pretty much. And, uh, so, um, what made you decide to do this there? I know well, what you said, but what else was there besides that? Well, I was with this, um, I'm a re, you know, retired New York city, uh, law enforcement officer correction i did that and i've always been an entrepreneur and i was very successful in real estate and i i did have a, a at the time a friend of mine who tapped me on the shoulder he was actually starting a project and uh to see if i could be a, the police captain in, in his particular project and i told him i'm not an actor but one thing led to another uh there were some hardships and um and some absence and so that that particular project fell apart and so I felt bad for the uh, the group of the aspiring actors and actresses that were had invested some time into putting some together. So I picked up the torch from scratch, and we came up with this, you know, kind of a concept of moving. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so I guess the first thing I'm going to ask is because, you know, based on me, you know, being who I am. Um, I'm a character. I'm a huge character. Um, and I'm also one of those guys that doesn't pull punches. Um, so I'm going to ask you first and foremost, is this movie a, a caricature of what you think Donald Trump is or what, or is this an actual movie that is for Donald Trump? You, you know, th that's very interesting. Um, when I, my overall concept was when I got Trump into the movie I, at the time, starting from the very beginning, I said, I don't have a, a, a The Rock. I don't have a Joe Pesci. I need someone that's that's going to flame up and have, and he has it, okay? He's very talked about. He's very popular. So that was the the initiative kind of a concept. And so, you know, kind of like I wrote it with what he kind of, the kind of his character is in real life. He's pro, you know, firearms uh, to protect your Second Amendment, the right to bear arms and things like that. He kind of does things his way. You know, he's like, you know, he's not a political kind of a guy in his own way. He does it his style, and so I kind of wrote it in, in in that in that in that uh track. Okay, so, I, I, okay, I got what you're saying, but again, um, is this movie pro Trump? Did you write it from an angle of that? Right. I guess, I guess you can you could say that yes, absolutely, for the reasons that. He writes an executive order uh, approving the vaccine to save lives. He implements actions to stop the, the repeated violent criminals from hurting our loved ones and so forth. And in the in the particular in this particular movie, uh, there is uh, where he's going for re-election, and he gets he winds up re, uh, winning by the majority of the vote. Okay, so um, I take it you are a Trump supporter then. I'm, 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 in, I'm in between. I'm not in, I don't, I'm not involved in politics as far as Democrat or Republican. I'm not like, I don't get them. I'm not involved in that. You know, I've never, um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a creator, you know, um, and, and, and I've, I've found it to be intriguing to be blessed to have an opportunity to, to, to come up with a unique concept, you know, something okay. that could be outside the box that someone could tell me, Hey, why this or why that? And that's pretty much what I'm doing. Cause I mean, I'm looking at the film and there was a couple of things that kind of stood out to me. You know, the first time I watched it on um, the uh, first time I watched the, uh, the trailer, cause obviously I haven't seen the movie yet. Um, first time I watched the trailer, I was, I was back and forth on what the movie was. Okay. And I think you did a good job with the trailer on doing that because somebody like me who is, you know, you know, I'm not a Trump supporter. However, I'm a member of the media. You know, I have got to, you know, with my 10,000, you know, followers and my 50,000 people a week that listen to me, I've got to remain unbiased, but at the same time, have an opinion. So um, I watched this, this movie with an open mind and open head, and I went into it looking at it going, okay, what is this? So I watched it two or three times. And, you know, there was a couple of things that stood out to me. Number one, um, the casting choice as far as Donald Trump goes, because um, that gentleman 
is a little bit, um, you know, I'm not trying to say anything negative about the guy, um, but he's a little bit bigger and a little bit more, you know, he's he doesn't fit the normal. Yeah. He kind of looks like a cartoon version of Donald Trump. Um, and then number two, just like the, you know, the whole idea of stopping criminals and, you know, the portrayal of criminals that look, you know, from my viewpoint in the movie kind of reminds me of what the whole Black Matters, my eh, Black Lives Matter movement looks like. So I'm kind of, uh, so I was kind of thrown for a loop, you know, it was, I, I was really kind of torn about this. So what were some of your reasons behind the direction and stuff like that behind, you know, the things that you went with in the movie. Sure. Sure. Um, you know, exactly what you're expressing is exactly what was intended. Right. If what I've come to realize is if I, if I would have navigated this particular project towards pleasing one side or another of an audience, we would have not had a verbal conflict or, or dialogue. Right. And so my, my idea was to turn around and, and throw the trailer out there where it's somewhat really kind of confusing and you're trying to figure out, just like you said, pick out, is it this, is it that, what is it? But we are coming out with a teaser and uh, that's coming out really soon and that'll put the nail kind of like on the coffin, the direction where it stands. Got you. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, like I said, it, it just stood out to me in, a, in almost a satirical way. Um, but at the same time, I was like, it looks really serious. I mean, it could have gone either way. You know, it's, it almost reminds me of something like my brain would do, you know, cause I'm a, I'm a giant. I love messing with people. I'm a stand up comic. So I love, you know, love messing with trolls. I love doing all this, the fun stuff and messing with people. So it reminds me of a movie that I would make where I would make everyone think that this is the greatest Donald Trump movie ever. And at the end, throw him the greatest swerve ever and kind of make them go, Oh man. <laughs> so that's what it kind of reminded me of. I was like, okay, I got to do this. So I was kind of, you know, and that's why when uh, I got the opportunity to interview you, you know, I was like, okay, you know, I don't care if it, you know, this guy's Donald Trump or not. I don't care if this movie's for Donald Trump or not, but I want to know, you know, you know what the idea behind it was. And I was excited to talk to you just because of the, the fact you. that we can have a debate about it, you know, cause again, I've been having friends and uh, fans text me all day and, you know, Message me all day. Ask them this. Ask them about this. You know, um, so I've gotten a lot of dialogue from them because they've all watched it a, a couple times, and they're all kind of like, "Hmm, I wonder what's going on here." So um, I'm going to ask you a couple fan questions real quick. Okay. Um, so this one um, comes out from a, another woman that's in um, that's in uh, Orlando, um, the Sanford actually area actually, um, and she wants to know. Why in the trailer you put a um, a screenshot, a graphic that says movie of the year? Ah, uh, that's how this is the way I, I look at it. Um, that's our uh, that's our doing as a group uh, that puts so much effort and hard work. A lot of the aspiring actors and actresses uh, have put a lot of time. They volunteered and they, and they and they put a lot of really strong efforts so to us that's that is our wearing that's our pinning ourselves kind of a thing you know it's not for the world to agree or disagree one of the most beautiful things that i'm able, you know in a position that i'm in is that i'm you know the sole sole proprietor of this production and so i don't you know i don't have to please i'm not with disney i got to go to the board i got to ask permission i got i got to prove it you know please anybody you know so i got you okay um, no, that's a, that's a good answer. I mean, so basically you're looking at a perspective from you guys in the cast, right? You, that's okay. how, that's how we feel. <laughs> okay. Um, and oh, then if I, can, if I can further elaborate on that real quick, go right ahead. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I do feel proud of at the end of the day, whether people agree or disagree or whatever, uh, we're going to, you know, we're the first one to come up with a feature film and this year. Because due to the coronavirus, I mean, we were able to close the doors at the right timing. It was perfect. Um, but, with you know, with the concept of the coronavirus is number one. And the first that I know of Donald Trump movie that has not been made, not not a feature film like this. So I think that's outside the box and we find that distinguished and unique. Okay. Um, the next question um, asks this, um, you know. It's not a whether or not you are for Trump or against Trump in this question. It's just a matter of your perception of things. Um, do you feel 
Do you feel that um, what he's trying to do in the movie he's capable of as far as the stopping crime? Do you actually do you actually believe that he's capable of doing it? That's a good question. I, yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. I believe that um, if he can have his way, you know, he would take a leadership role on anything that he does, you know. And that's why I kind of guided it that way. I kind of shot it in a way that that's his style. That's the kind of human being he basically is. You know, if he believes in something, he's going to do it unless, you know, he has all kind of levels of forces that will stop him. But other than that, I believe he would do it. Okay. Um, the method that you chose, um, again, these are all viewer questions that I got today. Sure. Um so these aren't mine. Um, so the next one I got was, um, you know, hold on. This is an interesting question. Hold on. Let me read it again. Okay. Oh, um, the method you chose, the you know, the whole – because um, – I'm going to go ahead and rephrase it because the way they worded it doesn't sound right. So it sounds to um, this person that – you know, looking at it from that point of view. So you said that you picked, um, you know, the whole, um, the idea of what was the name of the group again? I'm sorry. The, uh, the, what do you mean? The dark angels, the dark angels, excuse me. Thank you. Yeah. So the dark right. angels, um, are kind of like our, you know, some of them are ex-military. Some of them are police captains, like you said, or they're, they're civilians right. that are, you know, fighting co crime across the country. So right. it looks like, from our, my perspective and this per person's perspective, because I didn't look at it like that at first, that it's almost like vigilantes taking on crime, but almost in a, so it's almost like a comic book type of scenario where mm -hmm. this group of vigilantes just, just kind of takes off. I mean, was that something that you were kind of Ab going for? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Um, the idea in, in, in this, in this movie, when, when people look at it, 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 this is not of the average criminal, someone who stole a bike. And the, what you're going to see in the movie is some of the most heinous, unfortunately, crime that even if you're not for guns or taking someone's life and so forth, but, you know, someone kicking your door down, a home invasion, and, and you know, just throwing your, you know, killing your family in front of your eyes and things like that. What do you do with these people? Like, what are you really doing? And so, you know, me, I'm a retired law enforcement officer. I worked in cor correction for over 20 years. And I know how the criminal mind mentality, the way it thinks. I used to work, walk around behind the jail cells and listen to their conversations. And, and, and I, you know, so whatever they could get away with, they, they, that they, you know, they would try to do their best to get away with. But uh, I, I've heard it. I've seen it. And but people have, you know, basically no idea when. You know, someone, it's like, a, how do you say that? I call them like the devil's soldiers that uh, hide themselves within the human flesh. Okay. Um, first off, I do want to go ahead and say thank you for your service, um, for doing 25 years in corrections and thank law you. enforcement. Um, you know, in this day and age, you know, with the, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and all this other stuff, you know, um, you know, police officers are definitely looked down uh, in, a dirt, in a certain way. Um, so I don't look at that like that. I just, you know, believe, you know, it, it's a few bad eggs that did a few bad things and so on and so forth. And, you know, whatever the case might be, you know, I still have a lot of faith in the correction system, um, to a certain extent. So I want to say thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. So my next question, um, actually comes from your website. It's not, more, it's not directly movie related, um, but kind of is. So, um, somebody wanted to know, according to your website, you um you ask for investors and right. that you're you're stating that you'll receive a hundred percent um return on an investment. Right. So why do you how can you guarantee that? No, there's not a guarantee. If you gotta read the, the fine print because it's a non-recourse investment, okay? Okay, so that, okay. Yeah. So what happened, that's all stipulated, right? Uh how do I get these numbers from? Well, I get the numbers. We've already done the hard work. Right. Um, I've invested approximately 200,000 into the project of myself, my pocket. Right. Uh, what is the only thing that's needed right now is um, to inflate this project up in the air by means of digital marketing, billboards, radios, commercials, so that the world could know that it exists. And even if it's that one side, whoever, if they're going to be the Trump supporters that will support the project, 
there's a very then good chance that they'll turn around and rent the movie at the nine ninety nine, you know, for the uh, for the twenty four hour period, you know, and so that's where that that comes from. And, and now, the reason why the if, if this takes off, then because I'm counting it off that if it, let's say even sixty million people uh, rented the movie, right? Hypothetically, that's okay. over three hundred and fifty million dollars. And if, if if half of that, the seven like that, so that was my concept. Okay. Um, now somebody, uh, had asked and their math was off on this, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it anyway, uh, with the corrected number. Uh, they said, you know, why are you releasing it almost exactly 30 days before the election? But it's, it's more like exactly 31 days, but why are you releasing it so close to the election and not now? Yeah, well, that's the, that's the whole idea. The idea is to give it the hype and the build up and the attention so that right 30 days prior to the election, Whoever wants to support the project, you know, it, that's I think where the the buff, the lighting, which it's gonna, it should illuminate. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, if you do something today, three days later, people forget about what you did. You know what I mean? Totally irrelevant. So I've been slowly, I want leaving it on its own to market, but I got other, you know, uh, ways of where as we get closer to get it out, you know, out there on the market. Okay. Um. Now this is me, not them. So, you know, with that answer and um, everything we set up to this point, you know, again, my perception, you know, just a question, um, again, just an honest debate. Um, it sounds to me like that uh, this movie is either is going to do one of two things. It's going to piss off a lot of people or it's going to make a lot of people really happy. And I think, you know, just from the tone of the the, the trailer, that it's going to piss off a lot of the Democrats and it's going to make a lot of the Republicans happy. Releasing it so close to that deadline, I mean, yeah, basically to the deadline of the election day, could cause a ridiculous amount of controversy. And I and I'm looking at it now that you've said that. That was your whole goal, right? You wanted that 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 stirring, and then even now you're kind of like you know, when you when you're saying stirring, you're right. The stirring, in the fact of numbers, that it could it 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 could you know what I mean to mm -hmm. actually reach to the to those supporters that would be interested in in, in renting the movie. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, because it, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um. So because like with some of your answers that I was asking, you know, whether you're for or against Trump or whether it's a pro Trump movie or whatever the case might be, um, it sounds like you're staying away from that answer for the sheer fact that you don't want people to have, you know, to know what your opinion truly is. Therefore, you can kind of, you know, do what you're trying to do best, which is make a name for yourself with the, you know, or make a name for the people that you have in your cast. Um and try to help them build them up without ha giving too much away. I mean, is that, do I kind of, uh, hit the nail on the head with that? Yeah, I, I think you, you know, you, you, you definitely have some just, you know, justification and writing what you're saying, you know, it's like, it, it automatically because I, what I've done is it, it gets automatically dragged in, dragged in into a political sense, you know, come on, you know, what's behind the wall kind of a thing. Right. And what's behind against the wall is I'm a filmmaker. I'm an entrepreneur. I, I want to make a lot of money. I chose Trump because uh, I didn't have that Rocky or that main star. He has a huge following. So it's my marketing strategy to turn around and get it to navigate to, in the hands of those that are willing to support it so that you, me and my company could do well and move on to bigger, better things in life. Okay. No, I mean, that uh, that makes a lot of sense. It really does. Um, all right. So next question. Where to go? I asked that question. All right, I think that's all of them, or some of them that I took away and reworded. Um, so, did you model? Uh, this is me now because I'm done with them. Um, some of them, <laughs> some of their questions were just stupid. Um, but uh, did you model the Dark Angels against any, you know, any particular group or anything like that, or did you, was that your strictly your own vision? Um, or was it something that was it something that kind of spark that for you? Well, the whole the whole baseline concept and um, 
in, in, in this particular project, Donald J. Trump stands for humanity. And that's, you know, it's what's challenging is what I'm getting across from a lot of people is the separating from fiction and reality. You know, it's a movie. And in the movie, he's just a guy that, you know, stands to protecting all Americans, standing no matter who they are. It's a, it's, it's a Dark Angels are very diverse, very diverse. They come from all walks of life, all different mix, but standing for one purpose and one purpose only against those repeated offenders, career, history, violent criminals that continue to, you know, take advantage of the innocent, the vulnerable, and the weak. Okay. Um, I, I like what you're doing. I like what you're doing. And it's kind of, it's, it's intriguing me because again, like I said before, you know, it reminds me of something that I would do. And it's very, it's, it's interesting how you're putting all this. And I'm, I'm more intrigued now than I was before. Because I think the questions that I'm asking you with the answers that you're giving me are raising more questions than they're giving answers. You know, it's very you're you're doing you're kind of pulling a eighties Roddy Roddy Piper thing here. <laughs> just when I have all just when you think you have all the answers, I change the question. And yeah. I think and that's what it feels like you're doing. And I, yeah. I and I dig that. I, I really dig that. Um, because now you're you got people leaving this interview, you know, sitting there thinking what the heck is this? What, what really is it? And you know, you're, you're giving a lot of, you know, synopsis and you're telling them what it is, but at the same time, you're making them question what it is. And I, and it's, it's interesting. I, it, you know, I like where you're kind of going with this. Thank you. Um, so one of the things that I was thinking earlier, like I said earlier with the whole black lives matter movement, um, you know, from a police officer, you know, from a police law and law enforcement corrections officer, you know, point of view, where do you stand with everything that's going on right now in the world? Wow. That's, um, now that's, this is outside the box. This has nothing to do with the movie. Nope. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you know, the bottom line is I do believe that, uh, changes do have to be, be implemented without a doubt. Um, the fact is that, you know, unfortunately, it, it saddens me to even say, but even me as being a law enforcement officer, I never took that route, abusing my authority. But when you give any human being too much power, too much power, then you're uh, leaving it up to their discretion on the levels of tone of how they're going to balance and balance that power. And, and that's where it gets lost because there is the blue wall of silence. It does exist uh, because the officers need to protect each other at, at whatever model. Uh, but now that, you know, there's phones and cameras and everything like that, none of that in the past, is, you know, that, that has it has to occur could no longer happen that way anymore because this is what it's gotten to. So what do I believe? I do believe that uh, all police officers should be retrained. Uh, they shouldn't accept a police officer that should be 25 and over at least. At least is what I say. Um, I, I would also recommend that every police officer cadet becomes a correction officer first to put them behind a jail cell. Why? Uh, for at least two years before they can go to the street and become a police officer. Because what happens is uh, a young man coming out of the police academy and you're giving him that badge and that gun and, and, and they just don't know how to act. But when you take a human being and you put them in a prison like I did. OK, uh, for 20 years, uh, you got to really start learning how to use the, your verbal judo because you don't want to go for the next 20, 25 years of your life. put you know, your, your life in constant death or in, in danger and so forth. And so you really learn to start verbally how to de-escalate situations. But that's what I did. And um, a lot of the officers would be surprised why, like, I didn't have a lot of, like, you know, fights or problems on my floor. We used to have uh, uh, two officers responsible for 100, uh, 120 inmates. They can overpower you. They can overtake you anytime. But the one thing is, if you give respect, you get respect. I never made a promise I couldn't keep. And whenever anyone ever needed anything, I did my job. You know, and if you do that, that's half your war kind of uh, to solve these issues. So um, the changes, changes have to be, unfortunately, they have to be, they have to come for the reason that in law enforcement, and it's, this part saddens me, when I was a kid growing up in Brooklyn, uh, I remember when the cop used to walk the beat, 
and talk to the you know the community and and the people and and and, and the people would protect those officers that did that. Um, now is to a degree, and again, it's just the, the, the off balance setting of where. It's scary, you know, people are scared to talk to officers. A lot of times they're standing and, you know, it's like you can't ask them a question. They create this kind of disconnect with the community. And, and that should change. You know, I believe that, you know, officers should start walking the beat, going through the communities, getting to know the people, developing these relationships, you know, with the kids, helping out as much as possible. Um, that's what I, you know, what I think. Um. I, I like everything you just said. Um, that is a, uh, those are all really, really genuine, generally good ideas. Um, and, you know, you know, it, those are something that should definitely be discussed. Uh, those are, that's actually really, really interesting. I never thought about putting in a, you know, cadet fresh out of loss, you know, the, uh, the Academy into, you know, the prison system first. That's interesting. I like that. The, you know, making them a corrections officer first. That's interesting. Um, Cause that'll give them a whole perspective, different perspective, you know, on the, that kind of stuff. Um, very interesting. So you said something interesting. You said something um, at the beginning of that, that kind of sparked my interest a, a little bit. Um, so going back to the movie, um, you said that if you give somebody too much power, sometimes it can get a little out of hand. So with that being said, and I'm paraphrasing what you said. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Um, do you believe if say, for instance, you weren't the person that made this movie, the, the steps that the, that the Donald J. Trump in your movie took to eliminate criminals, you know, with the dark angels, do you believe a situation like that is taking it too far with the power of abuse of power? I mean, in, in real life or in fiction, I'm, I, I'm in real life. We're talking real life now. So kind of going with the movie, but at the same time, real life. Oh no, in real life, we couldn't, we, <laughs> we, we couldn't have that. It would be too extreme. <laughs> and know? that's why, and that, and that was why I asked that. Cause I'm, I'm trying, again, I'm trying to find that, that yeah. line in your head, you know, where, where yeah. you, you deem it as a, the fictional thing versus what, you know, you think could happen. So that's where I kind of wanted to, you know, kind of go with that. Cause it, again, it, you know, I, I love your logic behind it. It's, you know, the whole idea of, you know, regardless of whether you, whether I'm for or against this guy, I'm going to use his popularity in my favor and make you question everything with this movie. And that's a really, really cool concept. Um, and I just love the way you're presenting it in a, in a way that, from your side, you know, standpoint that it's not for or against anything, but it, it's going to make you think. Right. And, and that is a very, very interesting concept for me. And I'm, and I've said interesting a thousand times in this interview, because it really is. Um, it just, it's sparking a lot of thought in my head. It sparked a lot of debate on my DMS today and my text messages today. Um, and on my, uh, you know, my online uh, discord. So it's like one of those things. It's like, Whoa, what is going to happen here? So I commend you on Thank that. You. Um, because, you know, I, I think anybody else that would have made a film like this would have come on here preaching the name of Trump and talking about how, well, make sure you vote for him on November 3rd and, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I, and I like the way that you're not taking sides. And, I, um, and then when asked about real life, you're like, you know, I know this is, this is um, ex too extreme. I know that this is, um, you know, not the way it needs to go. And I, and I like that. Cause you, you're basically telling us, Hey, we, you know, that this is fiction and you're ho and you're don't want him to ever implement something like this, but you're, no. yeah, but you're willing to use your creative thinking to make people think that it's possible. Yes. All right. So, um, hold on. It's got another question on my thread here. Um, does the movie show corporate criminals that steal mil millions of dollars and kill thousands of people? Um, he has over as he overheard their conversations. No, it has nothing to do with don't with the corporate world. Um, yeah, corporate criminals. Yes. No. No. Okay, so it just has to do with you know the street criminals. The street criminals. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. That was from an, a fellow podcast of mine that I'm uh, I am acquaintances with, um, you know Anastasia and your husband. Thanks for watching. Um, so, you know, I mean, 
I think you have sparked a debate in the best possible way. Um, and I appreciate, you know, your answers and, you know, I appreciate the, the conversation, the dialogue that you and I've had, Thank um, you. because it, again, it wasn't, you know, for or against anything. I was, you know, I kept it pretty much in the middle, but at the same time, you know, so did you. And I, and that, I like that. Um, that's what the show is about. Um, and at the same time, it's also about, you know, real life. So thank you for that. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, you know, again, regardless of whether you are for Trump or for, and I'm not talking to you directly. I'm talking to everybody. Um, regardless of whether you're for Trump or, you know, against Trump or whatever the case might be, I genuinely hope this movie does something for you and for the actors in this film. Um, because regardless of whether they're for or against it, they put their heart and soul into it and you can tell and they deserve the recognition that they deserve because of it, regardless of the political aspects of the movie. So I, 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 you know, I hope that I really truly hope that this does something for you and your name gets cemented in stone and we kind of see what happens next with you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Not a problem. And, um, you know, I mean, to be totally honest with you, um, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what the reactions are of people in October. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to, you know, reach back out to your PR, your agent or PR manager or whatever that, um, whoever contacted me, okay. um, again, around that t time, I'm gonna give it a couple weeks and I, okay. I don't want to have this debate with you again and kind of see what people out there are saying, what they say on Rotten Tomatoes, what the interwebs are saying, you know, right. you know, I want to see what their reactions are and then kind of have this chat with you again in, in three months and kind of see what, where it goes. Cause I mean, this is, this is going to be interesting. And I'm really, I'm really, you know, intrigued by it. Thank you. And Derek, I just want to make a mention, um, just to add, I'm, it's funny because it, it, you know, I'm you're sharing your thoughts with me. And I, I think two kind of brings think alike because you made a mention, you kind of think the same way. Um, I got family members, I got loved ones, you know, uh, I'll tell you straight like it is. They, they, they don't agree with me. They didn't want me to do certain things. And, and, if I, if I would have gone that route, gone that route because I'm trying to divide and please, I would have never came to this beautiful, I find it taking the good out of it, you know, where I'm here before you, you calling me and, and providing me with an interview because somehow or another scratches the brain somehow. But I've had, um, you know, my own family member telling me, oh, well, I can't share the trailer with a particular party because they don't like the individual. You know, they don't like the, who you who you have. So <laughs> I said, look, I made, I made a, a project. The project, once I threw it out there, I'm ready for all the knives, the stones, the bats, the the, the crowbars that are going to come at me. It comes with the territory. So I tell my my sister and my, my say, look, then say, if you don't, you don't have to say nothing good. I ask my own sister, how do you feel? Well, I don't feel like, I feel like this and I don't like this. Well, say, share, share it and tell your friends that, <laughs> how much you don't like it, you know? And then when they start that, that kind of snowball there, you know? And so that's what a lot of my friends are doing now. They're saying, and it's, and it's working. So the trailer, I'm excited. I mean, in under two months, it's gotten approximately over 13,000 views and it's just the beginning, you know? So, um, I'm waiting for things to get closer and I, and I think hopefully it'll soar up. I'm hoping. Yeah. And, and that was another thing too, that I want to go ahead and say to my, my fans, my listener base. Um, thank you very much for your questions and thank you very much for not trolling with the questions. These were genuinely honest questions and you know, the few troll questions that I just kind of threw away were no big deal, but the 95% um, of them were just legitimate debate speaking questions. And I commend them, you know, and I commend you for, thank you for taking the time to actually answer fan questions versus just me babbling for 45 minutes. Anytime. Absolutely. So I'll definitely be reaching out to you again in the next few months because I definitely want to have this conversation Thank again you, Derek. after I see the movie and after I, you know, let other people see the movie because I want to see what they're saying as well. Because this is this is a good this is a good topic to have, especially four months away from the a major election like this. I appreciate you. Thank you, Derek. You're very, very welcome. I'm afraid I wish you nothing but the best. And thank you thank very you. much again. Okay. God bless. Thanks. You too. Have a good one now. Bye. Bye bye. Um Guys, I'm still confused. <laughs> um, again, I think I got more questions now than answers. Um, that was an interesting individual. 
because like I said at the beginning of the the interview, you know, it's it looks like something that I would do. Um, and just turn into a giant troll just for my own personal benefit, my own laugh. Um, and I'm actually in the process of writing a movie that, you know, may or may not do that. I don't know. Um, but the qu the, the thing about it is he stayed right in the center. He, he did. Um, so one of my, uh, for the uh, podcasters, uh, one of my uh, Twitch uh, viewers just said he gave Trump like vague answers. He did. And I think he knew exactly what he was doing. I truly do. Um, he. I, I don't know what to think. I, I, I need to decompress um, and talk about some other stuff. Um, if if anyone has any ideas about this, please send me a DM. Send me something. I, I, I have more questions now than I did before. <laughs> um, Anastasia and Anna Wife podcast. Uh, um, we're gonna talk about this on Friday. Um, and we'll talk more about that here in a minute. But yeah, we're definitely gonna talk about this on Friday because that was whoa. All right, so we're going to take a quick commercial break while I gather my thoughts. Guys, I'm here to tell you all about the brand new revolutionary product for manscaping today, the Lawnmower 3.0, a product that will not nick your sack and make sure that your manhood stays protected the entire time you are shaving. So do yourself a favor and go to manscaped.com and use promo code SHUTUPCAMERON for 20% off the Perfect Package 3.0, which not only includes the Lawnmower 3.0, but it also includes ball toner, which helps prevent ingrown hairs. You get ball deodorant, which helps prevent chafing and man stank. You also get this awesome, sleek, stylish leather carrying case. Offer $99.99. And when you use that promo code, you get 20% off. Also just released, the Weed Whacker, the perfect nose and ear hair trimmer. So again, go to manscaped.com. Use promo code SHUTUPCAMERON for 20% off. Trust me, your balls will thank you. Guys, ever wonder how I get this manly beard looking so good? It's all because of Viking Revolution. And at Viking Revolution, not only can you get some great beard bombs, but you can also get some great beard oils, as well as some awesome quick shower pads, which helps prevent you stanking up after the gym. Also, these great wet wipes, which help prevent, you know, stanky after you know, going doo-doo. And also some pomades and some other great products all at Viking Revolution. So you do yourself a favor, go to dcproductions.com forward slash sponsors, click on the banner, and get yourself some of these great products. Viking Revolution. Join the revolution. All right. So I had a moment to think. Um, uh, so one of the questions that was asked, and by the way, thanks for everyone who submitted questions. Um... I asked him was he did he write this uh in a comic book way to kind of show that vigilantism and in a fictional world can be taken on in a whole other way, you know, very comic book like. And he said that was the whole idea he was going for. So I'm sitting here looking at my Spider-Man, you know, my Captain America and my Captain America and my Avengers symbol, and my Iron Man and all the stuff that I have in my nerd cave here. Um, and it makes you think, you know, it really does. Cause I mean, what I said was that I thought I was taking it too far. And I said this before, and I talked to you guys about it before and I've posted on, you know, I didn't posted about it. Um, but I'm saying it now. And, you know, he even said it, that it would be too extreme and too taking it too far. Um, but now, now it makes me, you know, question, you know, was this his own version of like the Avengers? 
you know, taking on the Sinister Sticks or taking on Thanos or is Donald Trump Thanos? You know, you know, killing a bunch of people to save the rest. You know, is this a tie-in in a way that I think so. I, I don't know. But there's it's raised so many more questions. Now, honestly, I have you know my 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 opinions on everything have not changed. However, my whole idea behind the movie, and I'm I'm strictly talking about just the movie and his answers and the things that he talked about. It I, again, I'm just talking about the movie. I'm not talking about real life because, again, I don't want that happen in real life. Now, do I want the Avengers and Spider-Man to happen? Yeah, because I want to be fucking Spider-Man. You know, I got Spider-Man on my wall. I got Spider-Man on my shirt. I got Spider-Man everywhere. I got a little baby Spider-Man over there. I got Spider-Gwen over there. I got, you know, again, nerd crazy. But um, it it's making me really think about what this movie is. And it uh, I haven't in a really long time said to myself, what the fuck about a movie? Um, not since what, two, three years ago, that, that weird fish fucking movie, whatever that was called. The one that won the Oscar. I don't even fucking know. That one made me go, what the fuck is this? But no, this one's making me go, what the fuck is this in a very odd way? And I'm, I'm just, I want people to see it. Just to say they've seen it, and and because I'm I'm hoping this sparks controversy, <laughs> um, because I still don't know if this guy's for or against Trump. I still don't know if the movie is made on a realistic point of view, but in an extreme circumstances, you know, or if it's really just a troll. And I think he did a really good job at. If it is a troll, I finally have been outfoxed. I have. Even if it's not a troll, I've still been outfoxed here. Um, I guess being a, you know a corrections officer, a law enforcement officer for 25 years will give you those chops. And he even said that he's learned to use his mouth and de-escalate things in a certain way. And... Now I don't even know what to think. <laughs> this guy messed with my head. Um, again, strictly about the movie, not my political stance. Um, everyone knows how I feel about, you know, Trump and stuff like that. And, you know, the, the sickening shit that's going on in the world today. But, yeah, I, I, the movie has got me completely up in arms about what the hell is he doing. Because it's interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. Um, yeah, just damn. All right. So I had something to discuss here and I lost it. Oh, I remember what it is now. So, um, speaking of Trump and company, they, um, did a, Um, a press release today um, and a news conference today about um, let me pull it up about education so let me pull up the article here um, alright so the Pent um, Vice President um, Douche Nozzle um, you know Guy looks like a troll himself. Um, uh, Pence says the CDC changing school reopening guidelines after Trump called them tough and expensive. And there's a line in here that makes me question the entire um, the whole idea for it. So. Um, where is that quote? 
here's what he said. And I'm going to go ahead and quote this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and not really say what he said earlier. Actually, no, I'm going to go ahead and say it because it kind of leads up to, so I love suspense. Y'all know that. All right. So um, the president said today, we don't just want the guidelines to be too tough. Um, Penn said a news conference today. That's the reason why next week the CDC is going to be issuing a new set of tools, five different documents that will be giving, giving even more clarity to the guidance going forward. Um, by the way, this is from USA Today. Um, Trump tweeted on Wednesday that he disagrees with the CDC's very tough and expensive guidelines for reopening schools. Um, they've asked, they're asking thing schools to do very, some, bleh, they're asking schools to do very impractical things, um, threaten to withhold funding from classrooms and schools. Um, as we work with Congress next week on the next round of state support, we're going to be looking at, uh, looking for ways to give states a strong incentive encouragement to get kids back to the school. Okay. So that's the whole idea. But then um, Vice President Deuce Nozzle said this. What the president was saying this morning is that if there are aspects of the CDC's recommendations that are prescriptive or that they serve as a barrier to get kids back to school, we want governors and local officials and educate, education leaders to know that we're here to work with them. Every American knows that we can safely reopen our schools. Let me say that again. He said, and I quote, every American, not Republicans, not Democrats, not independents, not Tea Partiers, not every American knows that we can safely reopen our schools. What? No. <laughs> what the fuck? Just when I think this guy couldn't get any more ignorant, he goes and says something like that. Um What? Every American, <coughs> excuse me, every American knows that we can safely reopen our schools. Uh, for your podcast listeners, I've gone into NPR mode and I'm going to start speaking softly and staring into my camera and just kind of contemplating my life to this point because apparently everything I know is wrong and apparently mike pence knows better well i guess my nine-year-old is going to be a fifth grade dropout <sighs> there's so fundamentally many things wrong with this comment i mean seriously first of all not every American knows. No, we, they don't want, no. And, you know, families are divided on this. So I'm looking at it from a couple of different ways. Number one, my wife is a teacher. So when they go back to school in the fall, it's not just my wife who's at risk. It's my daughter as well. Or not just my daughter. That, excuse me. That's at risk. My wife is at well. My wife is as well. And... I don't like that because regardless of whether you, what, what your political affiliation is and whether you think that we are sheep for wearing masks or we're being overly cautious for wearing masks or the six foot, you know, social distancing is too much or, you know, whatever your thoughts are, or if you think it's perfect or you need to be stricter or whatever the case might be. I think every American knows, I would hope, that this illness is real. And it's not just something... I, I, I Again, I don't, I don't... I don't even fucking know. Guys, 
for the first time in existence, the great and powerful King of Kings, Prince of all that is awesome, you know, the King of Trolls, Derek, me, is speechless. Between the what the fuck is that movie that we're just talking about to this bullshit from Vice President Douche Nozzle, I don't know what's going on in the world anymore. The only thing I know is that my cat just ran into my freaking studio door. <laughs> and now I think he might be as dumb as Pence because... So here's okay. All right. So real talk now. So in my county, uh, where I live at in Virginia, um, they're talking about doing a hybrid model, um, at least for the first semester. So the first half of the school year, um, to where the kids will um, go to school for two days and then be long distance learning uh, the other three days. And or Parents can choose to have 100% distance learning. So it all depends on the parent at this point. There's no, there's no um, school in my district, in my county, that is allowing 100% school attendance right now. Um, I, I, I like the idea um, of that. But and then here, there's there's a couple of, um, uh, you know, issues on both sides of the table for this. Number one, my wife is going to have to go to school. Um, maybe I, they haven't even released what the teachers are going to be doing. They don't, they don't say whether the teachers have to be, you know, away from the school or at the school or whatever, the three, three days or the two days, whatever the case might be, or do they have to be there the full time? And just, you know, the other three days, the kids aren't going to be there, but the teachers will, um, they haven't really gone into details on that, particular thing yet per se um so we don't even know what's going on that so one of the things that bugs my wife to no end when it comes to parenting is parents who say um well kids need to go to school because i can't afford daycare okay while I get that aspect of things, my wife and your son's teacher, your daughter's teacher, or whatever the case might be, is not there to babysit your child while they're at school. They're not there to babysit. They're there to form your child and help raise your child along with you side by side and help, you know, foster information into the child's brain. But they're not there to be a, you know, a, a you know, a, uh, a babysitter. They're not. Um, in reality, you know, a good teacher is almost like a third parent um, to where they know their place or a, let me rephrase that a good step parent. That's a better way of saying it to where like they know their place as a teacher role or as a parental figure or a modeling shape, a role model in that person's life. But at the same time, they know when they need to help. And if you're sending your child strictly for the sake of, because I got to go to work and I ain't got nobody else to watch them, you're hurt. You're, you might as well take them out of school now and just put them on the farm to work. I mean, that's not why kids go to school. Um, and, and that's that is true. Um, so, but at the same time, the the true situation behind it is a lot of people do need the school system because of that. Um, but not for babysitting purposes for the, you know, for the fundamental things of, that the child needs. Um, so there's a fly on my drink. Um, so the three days, you know, the parent, some parents have already been stuck at home. Um, luckily some government offices have now switched to, um, you know, long distance working, um, as well, you know, working from home. So they've been there, be able to have been there for their, their kids. But at the same time, what happens in the fall? So there's a lot of unanswered questions. I mean, reality is the school system is needed in some capacity for that piece of, you know, thing. Because 
I think my cat just died. Um, but you, you follow what I'm saying. So if it wasn't for, you know, me having this and everything else I have going on, what would we do with our daughter? Come the fall. Um, Cause there's no way that we'd be able to afford daycare or anything else like that. Yeah. I'm making decent money with what I'm doing right now, but not enough to be able to afford that. It's just expensive. So for like $500 a week. Um, but luckily we, I can be home with my daughter. Um, no, I'm not a teacher. I'm a stand up comedian and a podcaster and a troll king and graphic artist and voiceover actor. And I'm kind of good with math, but not, I, you know, what's fucked up. <laughs> you know, what's fucked up. The fact that at 39 years old, I still remember how to do calculus and trigonometry and, and geometry and all this other stuff, all the a trees. Um, but basic fourth and fifth grade math, I have no fucking clue on. I don't remember any of that shit, but I'm going to have to help my, my daughter. Um, I'm gonna have to help her, uh, learn. Be right back. Oh, it's you. Jesus Christ. I thought it was a cat. Okay, so apparently it wasn't my cat. That was my wife. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that's funny. I opened the door and just saw my wife sitting there breaking down boxes and picking up some trash. That explains that. But anyway, back to what I was saying. My wife is not a teacher. My wife is a teacher, not a babysitter. I am a parent, not a teacher. So it's where we're going is very confusing for me, and I don't even know where we're gonna where what the where we're going, you know, and what we're doing here in Virginia is not going to be the same thing that they're doing in New York or California or even West Virginia or Maryland or Florida. Who knows? Interesting question. Would I send my child to daycare even if I could afford it? Now, my question to you with that is, are we talking about in general we're now with the pandemic because if we're talking about in general and I could afford it, absolutely. But what I'm talking about in the pandemic, if it's, if it, you know, if I, if I'm going to send them to daycare, I might as well send them to school. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think it would be a, there's a point either way. No, absolutely not. I'm not going to send my daughter to daycare. Just like I wouldn't want to send her to school. That's why I've been talking to my wife about, you know, strictly doing distance learning. Now, my wife is all like, well, you know, you work on your show all day and then you've got, you know, and you've got ADHD and she's got ADHD. How do you expect her to get anything done? The question is, I don't know, but I'm going to try. But again, the risk of her going to school and my, my my wife going to school and all this other stuff, it just I, I think it's too much risk. I really do. I mean, the thing about it is, regardless of your opinion or not, the facts of this, they said it would be gone with the, with the summer. The heat was supposed to kill it. The numbers have tripled in some places. So what's going to happen in the fall when it starts cooling off? What happens in November, December when it's 20 degrees or 15 degrees up here? Is it going to come back? It's going to be stronger than ever. Is Are we going to be fighting the, the COVID and the flu? Well, obviously we are. But, you know, this is a great subject for Friday. Um, we're going to have some fun on Friday. So I'm going to go ahead and stop talking about this because 
I don't have the answers. All I know is that I don't want my daughter to go to school. I don't want my wife going to school, but she's got to work and my daughter's got to learn. We'll figure something out. Just like I know everybody else will. But the whole point of this whole thing was not every American knows that you guys can reopen the schools safely. Fucking Mike Pence is a fucking moron. All right. We're done there. So in less than 48 hours, we've been talking about it all week. Talking about it right now. Um, I announced it on Monday and it's happening in less than 48 hours. Something that's never been done before, probably, on Twitch, on in podcasting history, probably. Seven podcasts, eight people, all on the same screen, representing different cultures, representing different topics, representing different, you know, places across this um, country and this continent. We've got podcasters from Canada. We've got podcasters from um, Georgia, from Las Vegas, from uh, Washington, from here in Virginia. We've got podcasters from all walks of life. Um, and we're just going to have the greatest show ever. Um, so, yes, I said Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> um, we're going to have the greatest show ever. Um, so here's who's coming on. And if you haven't listened to any other podcasts, please give a listen to at least one episode between now and Friday. Um, the podcast we got coming on on Friday is and the wife podcast, the general public podcast, garbage nation podcast, social butterfly podcast. Hold on. I'm losing track of everybody now. Where that damn graphic go you just posted, Anastasia? General Public Podcast, Garbage Nation Podcast, and the Wife Podcast. Oh, two girls in a podcast, Social Butterfly Podcast. And after a month long, chill at home with her kids, you know, being annoyed with life and being annoyed by me on a daily basis with text messages and phone calls. The long-awaited return, at least for one night, of Cat will be back on the show for one night only. Maybe more. Who knows? I doubt it. I'm trying, but whatever. Um, Cat will be on the show on Friday with her Teachable Soul podcast, representing that. Um, so six podcasts plus me, seven podcasts, um, and then the um, you know. Actually, nine people because Anastasia and her wife from Anna, uh, her husband will be on the show from Anna and the Wife podcast. And then there's two people from Garbage Nation, and then uh, one from General Public, one from Two Girls in a Podcast because the other one couldn't make it. And then the Social Butterfly, and then of course Cat and myself. So nine people on this screen that I'm waving my hands in front of right now. One place or multiple places. One place live right here on Twitch. At DCK Productions. Um, it could go an hour. It could go two hours. It could go three hours. It could go four hours. We don't know. We all ha have our own separate um, opinions. We have our own separate, you know, stuff that we talk about on our podcasts. You know, and the Wife podcast is, uh, is a very sexual podcast. Uh, they're talking about other things as well, but it's a very sexual podcast. While two girls in a podcast, the lady that's coming on on Friday, her name is Katie, um, is a very, you know, religious, God-fearing person. So, you know, interesting, you know, could go there. You know, general public podcast, that guy, uh, Bam Bam, relies on me a lot of myself. He's very eccentric and crazy. And we all know who, why, why, why I love Kat, because she's just Kat. Um, she is like a cat. She could be sleeping on you. And the next thing you know, just fucking out of nowhere, crazy. Um, and cat, if you're listening, I love you. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm right. And then, you know, it's just going to be an interesting overall conversation. Um, garbage and the garbage, the garbage podcast people, um, garbage nation people. Um, I've only listened to one of their episodes and they're still a fairly newer podcast. So I'm kind of curious to see. Uh, where that kind of goes and see how they fit into the whole equation. I picked podcasts and I'm not going to lie that are fans of mine. 
the ones that were every time I post something, they like it. Um, every time I post something, they comment on it or they share it. The ones that actually give a shit about me and the way I do things on this show are the people that I'm giving a shit about as well. And I'm going to show that support and show that, you know, stuff to them on this show, you know, and expose my listeners to some of the best podcasts that I listen to. Some of the best people that I've just met organically through Instagram. These are all uh, people that I've become acquainted with through Instagram. That's it. I don't know these people. They don't know me. They they watch me. They listen to me. They see what I post. They see what I say. And they like what I do. I like what they do. And we're here to talk some fun, have some fun. We're going to talk shop. We're going to talk about podcasts. We're going to talk about, you know, what we say is good for podcasting starts and what's not. We definitely gonna talk about education and Trump and all this other stuff today. Hopefully somebody can lay some insight in on this. Um, I'm definitely gonna play the the pod that uh trailer for everybody on Friday again. So I'm kind of curious to see what everyone thinks if everyone hasn't watched it yet. So Anastasia and husband, if you guys have not uh, you guys already watched the pod, you know, the tonight, but you'll see it again on uh on Friday, um, whoever else is, you know, watching, um, you're not logged into Twitch and I can't, you can't comment. So whatever. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, it's going to be a fun fucking night. Um, no celebrity guest. Um, I specifically told my PR agent, no guest on Friday. Um, cause I want this to all be about us and have some fun. Uh, and, it's going to be available, like I said, live on Twitch, 8 p.m. East, not uh, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Pacific, and just an overall good time. Uh, it's going to be very, 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 very interesting. Um, a lot of contrasting opinions and a lot of good topic. So I hope you check that out. Um, and you know, I hope whatever decisions you guys need to make as far as schooling goes for your kids, I. Don't have an opinion either way. I really don't. Um, I just hope that you do what's right for your kids and not what's best for you. That's all I got to say about that. But from myself and from Spider-Man, from Captain America and the Avengers and everybody else in this glorious nerd cave I have for myself, I bid you guys adieu. Thank you very, very much. Regardless of your political aff affiliation, I would definitely check out this movie, um, Donald Trump, the chosen. If for nothing else, just to get the conversation going. Cause again, I still don't know what even what it is. I'm just as confused as you. I'm still speechless. Even though I managed to keep up a conversation with myself for the last 20 minutes. Air five. All right. But anyway, good night, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. I will talk at you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow, Ben Milliken, another um, star of the new movie, Mighty Oak, that came out yesterday on digital. So we're continuing that theme from last week. We're doing it again tomorrow with Ben Milliken. Same time, same channel, twitch.tv forward slash DCK Productions. 8 o'clock east, 5 o'clock west. Ben Milliken live on the show tomorrow. But until then, peace.